Welcome to a basic introduction to mechanical ventilation. This is chapter 2.4, the consequences of positive pressure ventilation. So as you can expect, too much of a good thing is always bad for you. Positive pressure ventilation is no different. There are two areas of the body that you should keep in mind when you are worried about the consequences of positive pressure ventilation, the lungs and the rest of the body. Now the lungs can suffer from too much pressure and we call that barotrauma. Now this is essentially like blowing up a balloon until it explodes. In the lungs, barotrauma can occur even if the volume delivered is low because if the air is shuttled to one area of the lung as opposed to other areas of the lungs because it's collapsed, then the area that is open can be overstretched beyond what it would normally tolerate. Microscopic or macroscopic tears in the alveoli cause air to escape and can cause pneumothoraxes or even pneumomediastinum. Even if a pneumothorax doesn't occur, barotrauma still causes significant injury to the lungs because it stretches the alveoli and damages them further, which causes further lung injury, which perpetuates a vicious cycle. The most important systemic effect of positive pressure ventilation is decreased venous return. There are other consequences, but from the pre-hospital point of view, this is probably the one that should be concerning you the most. If you'll recall, the heart is supplied by two large veins, the inferior and the superior vena cava. This is the entire blood supply that goes back to the heart from the rest of the body. Both of these vessels run through the chest in order to get to the heart. And so these vessels are exposed to the airway pressures from the ventilator. These vessels are thin, they're very pliable, and they have a maximum pressure of about 10 centimeters of water unless the patient is dry, in which case then the pressure is actually lower. On positive pressure ventilation, the superior and inferior vena cava are exposed to higher pressure. Because these are very pliable vessels, this higher pressure can cause them to collapse. As you can well appreciate, since this is all of the blood from your entire body going to your heart, if you have a low or no venous return, then there is no blood to supply the cardiac output. And having no cardiac output means the blood pressure goes down. And so this is the reason why positive pressure ventilation can cause hypotension. The final consequence of positive pressure ventilation is intrinsic or auto peep. Normally, when a patient exhales, the entire tidal volume is exhaled, and at the end of exhalation, the pressure in the airway is the same as that of the atmosphere, which we by convention say is zero. If the tidal volume is not completely exhaled before the next breath, either because of airway resistance or tachypnea, then that residual air can start building up and cause pressure in the airway that we call auto peep or intrinsic peep. This auto peep can lead to barotrauma itself as well as decreased venous return like we had just finished talking about. As well, auto peep can contribute to patient ventilator dyssynchrony and difficulty weaning from mechanical ventilation but that's more of an ICU type problem and not really something you need to worry about in the pre-hospital environment. So in conclusion, there are two major consequences of positive pressure ventilation. There is barotrauma and the effects that high airway pressures have on the lungs to cause further lung injury and also the effects on the rest of the body primarily through decreased venous return and hypotension. There is also the possibility of developing intrinsic or auto peep, which can further exacerbate problems with barotrauma and decreased venous return. 